Hi, in today's video I wanted to talk about uh, one of the features that allows you to add storage from one NAS to another NAS. So perhaps you've got an old NAS um, and you want to uh, use it to expand the storage of your main NAS. Um, we're able to do that for free with a feature called VJBOD, uh, which is a virtual JBOD. Um, so JBOD really just stands for just a bunch of disks. So really we're just using your other NAS, uh, no intelligence of it. We're just using it as some disks that we're going to add um, into your uh, main NAS. Um, so here I've got a couple of NAS as an example. So I've got a, a TVS H1288X currently running QUTS Hero. Um, and I've also got a TS251D. So let's imagine you, you'd upgraded from the TS251D to the TVS H1288X. Um, in this example, I've got a couple of 12 terabyte hard drives in the TS251D, so I'm gonna allocate some of the storage from it um, across to the main NAS. You could, have, of course, allocate all the storage, but in the interest of speed, rather than setting up a, a 20 terabyte volume or something like that, I'll just do a one terabyte one as an example. Um, so you really don't have to do anything on the TS251D. So we can open up the uh, storage and snapshots and have a look at how I've got it set up with the storage. So really I've just got one main volume, which is enough to install some apps on the NAS. It's just a thin provision volume. It's taking up absolutely no space from the storage pool. Um, so right now it just has one storage pool and one volume. Um, that will change. So the other NAS is going to set up the VJ bod, connect it and even create the volume here for you. You do not have to do anything um, on the TS251D once it's uh, set up with a storage pool. That's the only requirement. You must have a storage pool with some free space in it to be able to create a VJ bod. So I'm going to move over to the main NAS, which will be in this example, the TVS H1288X. And I'm also going to go straight into the uh, storage and snapshot section. Um, so here um, you've got an option on the left hand side for disk slash VJ bod. So in the current example here, I've got a couple of SSDs set up as the main storage pool. Um, so I've got a couple of uh, WD uh, one terabyte black uh, M.2s here. These are set up as the main main pool. I do have a disk in Drive Bay 5, um, but I'm not using it for anything um, just for this example. It's there, but I, I, it's free. So you can see that it's got a purple logo. So that means it's free. Um, so when I look at the storage and snapshots on this one, I've got my main storage pool with the default shares, a couple of other ones created. Um, but currently I've only got 872 gigs of space available on this NAS. So that's from the RAID one with the uh, two one terabyte NVMEs uh, connected together in, in a RAID one there. So what I'm going to do is go to disks slash VJ bod. So right now we only see the drive bays um, that are currently in the NAS host, the main NAS that I'm looking at, which is the TVS H1288X. Um, so that's the main NAS there. At the top right, we've got an option for VJBOD. So I can go to VJBOD and go create a virtual JBOD. So here it will pop up the wizard that will create it. And this is just letting you know the limitations. Uh, so you can create um, up to eight different NAS uh, connected into one uh, main NAS. So you can have eight separate ones, remote ones connected into the host NAS. Um, each uh, a uh, bit of storage you add from the other NAS become their own storage pools. So they're, they're individual as such, but you do manage everything from the one QNAP here. Um, it uses iSCSI to do this. So for anybody not in the know with iSCSI, um, iSCSI is really just a way to uh, mount some storage that's on the network um, effectively internally. So it's not using um, sort of shared storage to access it or anything like that. It's a dedicated iSCSI connection uh, direct from one place to another. Um, so this is what we're going to use. So there's just a bit of a summary. You can pause that if you need to read some more information. Uh, I'm going to click next. So now it wants to connect to the remote NAS. Now, ideally, you would have all the NAS set up, static IP addresses, nothing's changing on them. Um, even better would be that you have a, a dedicated fast link between the two NAS. So a lot of our NAS have one or two 10 gig ports built right into them. If you weren't using them for your main network, you could absolutely have both NAS uh, direct cable connected with the 10 gig link, even both cable connections, if you've got two 10 gigs on both NAS, and you can bomb those ports together for an even faster link between the two NAS. Um, in my case, uh, I, I have the H1288X here on a 2.5 gig link, and the TS251D only has one gig, so I've got it connected at one gig. So I'm going to hit the detect button. So it's going to go off and look on my network uh, for any QNAP NAS that it can find that's going to be compatible with this feature. Uh, so once that comes back, I'll be able to use this drop down box where it says NAS IP address to pick the right NAS. So in this case, I'm going to use the TS251D. 
It wants the account details, so I'm going to type in the um, admin credentials for that NAS. So I'll type those in. And just to make sure I've done it correctly and the port number's correct, I'm going to hit test and it should hopefully tell me whether it's a success or not. There we go, we've got a success. Uh, so now I'm going to click next. So now it will give me a bit more information about uh, the local NAS, so the host NAS. And I can also click down to look at the remote NAS, so it's going to tell me uh, what the network cards are, what, who makes the network cards, the protocol that we're going to use, the IP addresses, everything is. Um, so that's fine. I'm happy with how that is. Again, 2.5 gig to 1 gig. So the ultimate limitation on the performance of this storage in my example is going to be 1 gig because that's the speed of this storage. So anytime I'm accessing the main NAS to put something in the storage from uh, the remote NAS, in my case, I've limited at one gig a second. Um, obviously, it would be better if this NAS had, say, two 10 gig ports and I could have them both bonded together and that would say 20 gig a second instead. Um, but the TS251D does not have 10 gigs. So in this example, this is how I'm setting it up. So I'll click next. Um, so now you can also click on NAS details so you can get some more information on the other NAS that, you're select that you've selected. So it tells you information about how the, the storage is set up, what's currently used, the disks, the firmware version. So you can use that if you want. Um, I'm going to choose the top option here. I'm going to create a new iSCSI LUN on the selected NAS. You can, of course, go to the other NAS first and create the iSCSI LUN manually um, and then just connect to it. But in this case, I'm going to let this NAS do absolutely everything on the other one. Um, host binding is an option that will lock it so that only uh, the H1288X, the main NAS here, can talk to that LUN. You can, you can restrict it so that no other machine is able to connect to the storage you're about to create if you wish. Um, I'm not going to do that for this one, but you can just tick that box if you want that feature. So we'll click next. It's giving me information about the other NAS. There might be multiple storage pools over there. I only have the one. Uh, so this is mirroring what I was showing you over here before. So I've just got the storage pool one and data vault over here on the TS251D, which is mirrored here. So I'm going to click next. Now it's asking for the capacity. Now the minimum size of the uh, storage that you can mount is 184 gigs. If you try to set it any less than that, you'll get a little warning. Uh, so for example, if I change that to a number one, it's going to give me a warning about that. But I'm going to change that from gigabytes to terabytes. So I'll create a one terabyte uh, storage pool over on the other NAS that I'm going to use on this NAS. A few advanced settings, if there's SSD cache on that other NAS, things like that, you can tick those. I don't have one, so it's grayed out here. Uh, so I'm going to click next on that. Here you can use authentication. So if you want to lock down what you're about to create with a username and password, you can set that up as well. Um, so I'm going to click next. Confirm I'm happy with how everything's set up. And then I'm going to click next. Uh, so now it's going to go off, create the LUNs, create the targets, create the storage, do everything over on the TS251D for me. I don't have to go there and do it. We'll go check it in a minute so we can see what it looks like. Um, but this is going to go through, it's going to uh, complete the, the storage creation. And then it will prompt me that to use this storage, I'm going to need to create a storage pool. Um, you can, of course, do nothing. There is an option to not do that straight after this wizard. Um, but I will choose that option when it appears. Uh, so I'll just leave that going here for a second while it creates that. Okay, here we go. So now it's created um, the, the, the LUN and done the connection to the storage. So here the next step is create a new storage pool. You can select do nothing. Um, if you were mounting to an existing LUN, there might be an option here to recover any existing data that was over there if you're reconnecting one that was disconnected. I'm going to choose uh, create a new storage pool. So when I click finish, it's going to pop that up. But in the background, we can already see that we've got the NAS host main set of disks, and we've also got the virtual JBOD. And it's even given us a picture of the NAS we've connected to there. So it already knows it's a TS251D and has given me the sort of drawing uh, for that. But I'm going to click finish here. So it pops up the uh, new pool wizard. Um, I'm not going to tick any of these boxes. Feel free if you need them for your purposes. I'll click next. I'm happy with how that's set up. So I'm going to create um, uh, the capacity there with the, the full capacity of the storage that was connected. And I'm going to click OK because I'm OK with erasing these disks. Uh, so that's going to go off and create the storage pool uh, here on this NAS. Um, so here we can see the remote ma uh, NAS model name, um, the, the NAS name. I called it the same thing as the model name. You get information about the storage. And from here, you can even uh, have a look in and see uh, how it's connected. So here with the VJBOD, you've got an option for VJBOD overview. 
If you click that, it'll pop up how that's currently set up so that it's a one terabyte uh, total size. Um, I've created storage pool two on it. Um, we can see the IP addresses and just some basic information about it there. Um, you can detach it here if you need to, connect, disconnect it if you want to. Or you have to select it over here, sorry, uh, for these options to work. So you'd see different options, but you can't do anything here till it's safely detached. So you'd have to detach it to, to use those. Um, so now if I come over to storage and snapshots, we can see we've got storage pool two, which is a virtual JBOD. So now I just have to create some usable space so that I can do something with it. So I could create a new shared folder, go through the wizard. Uh, let's say I'm going to call it the V uh, V uh, JBOD. Um, now the important thing here is to select the storage pool two, which is where the VJ pod was created. So that's where I'm putting this new share. Um, so we can see it's much larger than the uh, the internal storage. The internal storage free size is only about 300 gigs now. Uh, so this has given me almost an extra terabyte. Uh, you can add, allocate a folder quota, so you can set it to be whatever you want. So let's say I want to give that a, a 500 gig size, let's say. Um, so I can go next. Do I want to continue? Yes, next 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 finish um, so that's now going to create a shared folder now that would be the same exact process whether you are creating it on the internal drives or whether it's been done on a vj bod it's just right now this nas is effectively sending instructions over to the the other nas so here we can see we've got the main storage pool with the internal m.2 ssds and now i've got storage pool 2 which is the vj bod connection so that's sort of highlighted here letting you know what that is so that's just a share that i can use it doesn't look any different from any other share if i was to go to the uh, the file station and have a look at how the different shares are created i've got container multimedia public public one i've got some different um, shares there that are on the main nas but the vj bod folder is just right there right next to them it doesn't look any different from any of the others so if i click on the vj bod that's that share if i click on a different share like the container one that's on the internal one it's all nice and fast very quick and easy now if we were to go look at the ts251d we can see that it's basically just created a remote vj bod um, uh, uh, iSCSI LUN that's been connected. It's one terabyte in size. We didn't create that here. It was done by the other NAS. So this NAS really didn't need to do anything. You don't even have to be in this user interface for this to work. Um, so that's now been created and is mapped from somewhere else. If you ever wanted to delete it, you can of course come back into the TVSH1288X, the main NAS, go to disk VJ bod and down here you've got an action um, to have a look at the disk, change some settings. It's better to go into the VJ bod, go to the overview, safely detach it first, which will then let you disconnect it. And then down here, there will be an option under action so that you can delete the disk if you want to uh, get rid of it as well. Um, but that's how you do VJ bod. It's a really good way to utilize uh, perhaps an older NAS if you've upgraded to a new NAS and you've still got hold of it. Um, this is a great way that you can still use the storage capacity of it um, inside your main NAS and um, expand the capacity of your main NAS if you want to as well. And if anybody has any questions, please do let me know and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. Thanks a lot. Bye.